Hello everybody, what's going on and welcome back to the Road to Glory career mode. I hope you're all doing well. Today we bring you the final games of season number two in League One. By the end of today, we'll know if we're playing playoff football, we'll know if we're in the championship or, well, we can't fall out of the playoffs, so it's one of those two. Um, but yeah, we've got six games coming your way as we play out the rest of the season. And uh, I decided to try something out today. Um, we started with an ultimate game, or an ultimate difficulty, with the slider settings that we have been playing with. But in, uh, in recording this episode, and also I've been playing some of my proper career mode with Bournemouth, um, I've been finding that I'm just not enjoying playing on the new ultimate difficulty. If any of you didn't know, there was a patch recently released. I'm sure many of you who, uh, who love and play career mode have experienced it. So I went to try and find some ways of, of trying to essentially get that spark back in career mode. And I went onto a post where someone had explained that they dropped it down to legendary, but super buffed up legendary, where it still made it hard for them to defend, but they weren't sort of sat back having to essentially work with two chances a game. Because right now, one of the problems I was facing wasn't defending. Yes, it's still very hard to defend against the new Ultimate AI. But creating the chances was the issue. I was not having many chances at all. And uh, yeah, it just wasn't fun to play. So this first game against MK Dons actually was one of the occasions where that wasn't so much the case. I actually did all right in this game. We took the lead, Guru Zeta with the strike. Um, but in the end, we only came away with a point. We ended up giving a sloppy goal back to MK Dons. It was nice movement here off the ball and everything, but should have cut this out way before. Their shot came back off the post. Jay Cook didn't react, hit him on the back and fell kindly for the MK Dons player to smash it in. So at this point, I decided I had enough of, uh, of playing this uh, this Road to Glory career mode just for tonight um, at this uh, this stage after that one game. And I said I'd come back to it, which I did. And uh, that was after I'd had a quick look online to see what I could do to help me, maybe using some sliders. So I tried out the legendary thing. And it is exactly as it's, uh, it's intended to be. Because what it does is it does give you the, still the difficulty of having to defend against a team that essentially is pretty much buffed up. Uh, what I did was I put the pass error, the shot error, I put the shot error down to 45, the pass, put the pass error all the way down to like 10 or 15. Uh, I think I ended up on 10. Um, I put the first touch control error down at 10 as well. So creatively, it should have given us a bit more of a spark, but also should have given the AI still that power going forward. And I did feel the difference as well in terms of me creating the chances, and it was still... A bit difficult to defend against. We got a pretty dubious penalty, which Lopez was able to slot home after hitting the inside of the post to make it 1-0 here against Oldham. And I was really just using these games as experiments more than anything because I, I know I mentioned this. I'd conceded the fact we were playing playoff football anyway after the last episode that we had. So this was about whether or not we drop it down to legendary moving forward, at least in the playoffs coming up and maybe even in the championship or if I should still stick with that ultimate difficulty. We were 2-0 up in this game against Oldham. They created a chance there, narrowly wide of the post, but I was feeling pretty comfortable during this game. No real issues in terms of creating our chances. Should have made it three. Greenwood near post, saved by the goalkeeper. And uh, with about 20 minutes to play, they actually did get a really good opportunity here. Just didn't quite find the correct, uh, correct finish. Jay Cook easily catches that one. And it was a good day at the office for us. A 2-0 win, clean sheet, two goals to add to the collection. And after that game, I, uh, I felt like that was slightly too simple. But then the two following games that we had, that's where I then uh, bumped it back down a little bit more. So shot error out of 40, pass error out of 10, uh, pass speed up a little bit, goalkeeper ability up a little bit as well. And then as well, the first touch control error down to 10. And this is what I went with pretty much from, uh, from this point forward with Legendary. And let's just say it wasn't as easy heading into Oxford. We played them away. At this point, as I show you the lead table, we were still fourth. We were four behind Luton and we were six behind Wigan. Four games to play. So there's still the mathematical chance that we could do it. But in my head, I just, I just didn't see it happening. Uh, after 20 minutes, though, Mason Greenwood turned, had the shot. And it was a really good effort. And it came back off the post. But we were forced to defend for what seemed like large parts of the game. And I mentioned the smash and grab that we got recently in the Carabao Cup final. 
We did exactly the same thing here. Look at that for defending by McGinley. Throwing his body on the line to block that shot. And we were putting so much pressure from Oxford. And with 20 minutes to play, after they wasted a good opportunity, Henry into his teammate. The shot came in. Cook caught it. Threw it straight out. Lopez picks this up. We go up the other end, having done nothing for what seemed like 65 plus minutes. Curtis lays it towards the back post. Mondal's effort off the, off the post itself. And it came back, hit their goalkeeper and went in. So... The smile on my face coming away from this game with a 1-0 win was mental. I, I, just, I honestly don't know how we managed to win that game. It was a game which we should have lost. i show you the match facts here because, yeah, one shot on target. Remember, this is still legendary as well, just with the sliders we've added. We got pretty much battered. And I felt so bad for Oxford because they didn't deserve to lose that. But some games you have it go your way, others you do not. So that meant... Three games left. We're now four behind the top two. And uh, we had to face up against Ipswich, who at this time was sixth place. And this game was bonkers. We took the lead. Guruzeta scoring after six minutes. A fine finish as well from him. First time, left-footed curler uh, past the goalkeeper. We get a better look at it uh, from this angle in a moment. There it is. A solid goal. Uh, but when I say bonkers, I mean totally bonkers. There are seven goals in this game. Ipswich, they did not even let up as they got back on level terms in the first half. Vincent Young finishing from near post uh, and there was not a lot that Jay Cook could have done about it. When you're in this position, it's hope that you see your goalkeeper save it, but I just didn't expect that. Um, but yeah, 1-1 one, one, heading into half time, and we were able to create one opportunity just before the whistle came through. It was that man again, thumping finish, near post OP. And Guru Zeta got his second of the first half to make it 2-1. So we were going to lead in at the break. But we came back out in the second half and managed to make it three. Ronan Curtis down the left-hand side. Played through by Mills. Again, near post OP. Smashes it home. And we are 3-1 in front. Two goal advantage. Thinking the job is done. The points are ours. Surely from this point forward. You'd be wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Because half an hour to play... After a nice Ipswich move, Jay Cook saved the shot. They got himself a corner. And then from that resulting corner, it was sent into our penalty area. And what happens here, I have no clue. Uh, we were given quite a dubious penalty earlier. Well, we've got one back against us. Um, see if you can work out from the replay exactly why this was given by the referee. I don't know. Curtis here. Maybe it's the elbow. Maybe it's the head. I've got literally no idea. So... Penalty kick given to Ipswich. A chance for them to get back in the game. No mistake made from the spot. Great penalty. Bottom corner. Um, and that made it 3-2. So, nervy is the word I'll use to describe the last few minutes of this game. And one player in particular who let his nerves go a little bit. Lopez. Not somebody you expect to lose the ball in that situation. Uh, we defended the corner. Tried to break away. Gave away possession. Caught out. And it was 3-3. Uh, I panicked. I'm not going to lie. I tried to bring out Jay Cook here when I realised that they were in. And that just allowed the goal to be open. And they finish it off. So, we thrown it away pretty much. Yep, any chance we had at automatic motion was thrown away. Or so I thought when a massive, massive slice of luck came our way. If there's one time you do not want to see your defender pulling up with cramp. It is in the 90th minute when Lopez is running through. You cannot write it. You cannot write what just happened. Honestly, I, I, I spoke about us being fortunate, lucky against uh, Oxford. Forget that. Forget that. Any luck that we were talking about before has now been beaten by that. For him to pull up at that exact moment, Hughes, and us to get through, I couldn't believe it. We'd won the game by four goals to three. Oh, sensational. Just scenes. So... Match facts were dead even. There was one more shot on target from us, I think. Crazy game. And as I came out of it, look at, this, look at the table. Look at the table. The automatic promotion is still on the cards. So for the final two games of today, I leave you in the capable hands of myself as we jump to live for the remaining fixtures. So here is the situation. Two games to play in League One. Our remaining two fixtures are against Bristol Rovers and Portsmouth. We've got Bristol away, Portsmouth at home. 
We take a look at the league table. I had conceded the fact that we probably would have been playing playoffs this year. However, as you can see, I showed you this, didn't I, briefly? The table is extremely close. And to add more to this little potential end of season change around, Luton and Wigan, who are first and second, play each other next. So, that could be the game that could well send the rest of this top five all over the place. Barnsley are away to Oxford. And as I said, we're away to Bristol. Portsmouth, we don't need to worry about them just yet. But they are against us on that final day, of course. They've actually lost the least amount of games in the league, Portsmouth. Um, but they've also drawn 14, which is a lot of games when you look at it that way. But I mean, for us, I I'd already said that we were probably playing playoffs. So... To even be in a position now where we still could get automatic promotion is pretty ridiculous. And you might remember last season, of course, in League Two, the title went to the final day and we were able to win the title on the final day. So we could well do it again. And uh, I just did not expect to be in this position. So for the rest of these games now, I know we've been looking at the rest of what's been going on. We've been playing Legendary, but we're back to Ultimate for the final two games of the season. We'll use these as the kind of benchmark. If I feel like I'm comfortable on ultimate but don't quite get the results i'll stay with ultimate for the playoffs if i feel like it's a little bit too hard we'll go with uh, legendary and who knows maybe win both games and end up getting through here are the sliders though that i will be using for the ultimate games so the sprint speed acceleration down 47 a piece on the ai side shot error up to 55 pass error up to 53 shot speed down pass speed slightly down i mean they're not drastic changes you can see there's like three or two either way uh, 47 for marking to allow me to potentially get some chances because that's one thing that was making me so bored playing the game was just not creating anything. Uh, run frequency down slightly as well. And the final one is the first touch control error up a little bit. But they've all got 99 stats. So me doing those with the sliders probably won't make a massive difference. So let me swap around the team and then we'll get into game. Goal updates switched on for Wigan versus Luton and Oxford versus Barnsley. I've left out Portsmouth. Um, I'm not too worried about their result just yet. We still have to get the job done for us anyway. So here we go. First of the two massive games that we've got. Worst case scenario, we know we're playing playoffs. So we still have a shot at getting into the championship regardless of what happens today. But of course, we want to do it through automatic promotion. So let's see what happens in game one of two. Bristol Rovers, 11 on the screen. It's a five at the back. Upson captains the side. Clark Harris and Nichols looking to do the damage as the front two. For a screen though, Jay Cook in gold. Still no Wanderson meet off through injury. Mitchell at right back. The back four involving Rawson, Jose Antonio and Mills. Curtis Jones, Lakeda and Lopez as a midfield three. With Ronan Curtis on the left, Saka on the right. And number nine, Guruzeta leading the line. We do have Mason Greenwood ready on the bench should we need him. And we are off and underway for this one. Away at Bristol. Now, with Portsmouth to come, this is the game that we're already looking at to be the result that we have to get in order to take this to probably the final day. So we can't really afford any slip-ups as Mitchell's ball down the line to Saka is decent. We'll find him. Guru's had his good control here. Keeps hold of the play. Now it goes to Curtis. Lakeda in possession towards Guruzetta again, trying to break through. He's somehow got there, but he can't sort out his feet quick enough to hit the shot. And the keeper has it. I mean, why are we punching that ball out then, Jay Cook? Why are we punching that ball out? Ed Opson has just scored. Bristol lead. And the captain's got the goal. We're over the allotted time as well. We should have gone into halftime, nil-nil. We really should have done. It's a joke. Plain and simple joke. Mitchell lost the first foot race here. There you go. Down that right-hand side. And then Jay Cook, under no pressure at all, punches the ball away. Catch it. Just catch it and that's, that's done. We'd be fine. There's a hint of offside about that as well. I can feel the frustration beginning to get to me because we really should not have conceded that goal. We should not be 1-0 down. And the way that this has panned out, I don't think we're going to create a chance to get back in this game. And this is, this is one of the things that's frustrating me the most about this new ultimate difficulty is the games are just so boring to play at times. Two changes for us. Lopez has gone off. Greenwood's on. And also Winchester's on for Jones. 45 minutes of that first half. Not a single shot from us. And that is the big problem for me at the moment. I don't mind defending against the ultimate difficulty. I just cannot create chances. Greenwood now in possession. Great spin from him. Now drives into the penalty area. Mason Greenwood, welcome to this game. Just what we needed to spark some life into us. 
get in. 32 minutes to play. Bristol 1, Forest Green 1. Now, results elsewhere are not going in our favour at all anyway. So it is likely that it will be just the playoffs for us. Barnsley are still leading. I'm pretty sure one of Wigan and Luton were in front as well at half-time. So that puts one of them onto 99. It'll put Barnsley onto 99 and we'll be on 97. But forget about what's going on elsewhere because we need to do the job here. So that's a massive goal. It's our first shot of the game. And Greenwood has finished it off. And it did strike the post on the way through, but I don't care. Nestled in the back of the net. Half an hour to play. Can we create another chance? This, this has been a good response, but we need to do more. I'm also at 4-2-4 right now as well. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. Switch to a 4-2-4 to try and inject some kind of inspiration into the team. We got the goal back. And there's the goal straight away from Bristol Rovers. <laughs> What was I saying about being okay defensively against this difficulty? Take it back. I mean, Rawson, yeah, he misses the tackle, but there's no chance for Jay Cook at that point. He's like, what, 63 rated or something? He's not going to save those. Clark Harris smashes it home. It's going to have to be playoffs, isn't it? It's going to have to be the playoffs. Clark Harris' ball through to Nichols. I'm trying to get back in this game, and in doing so, leaving ourselves exposed. Jay Cook is there with a the save. We just about get away with it. And again, 15 to go. We've not had a shot since. How does it not go to Greenwood? Why did it not? Oh, come on. Ups and now off towards Little. This is just, it's just not, it's not. I don't understand it. Upson, right hand side. He goes back towards Little. It stayed in play somehow. He's just taunting me at this point. He's saying, come and tackle me. Sends the cross in. Mitchell clears the first bit of uh, the danger, but Nichols has it again. A go-go now in towards our penalty area. We've done the first bit of defending, and we will clear it away. Nine minutes to go to salvage something from the game. Will someone give me a run, please? Winchester. Saka might be offside. He is. Oh, this is horrible. Mitchell to the feet of Winchester. Last minute of the game now. The referee's probably going to blow his whistle as well. Even though he played an extra few minutes for them. Greenwood and Guruzetta exchange passes. Guruzetta holds off his man. Ref, that's a penalty. It's off the ball and everything. How have you not given that? Oh, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. Bristol 2, or Bristol Rovers 2, Forest Green 1. It ends our automatic promotion hopes. It is now mathematically impossible for us to get automatically promoted. So, Barnsley are top, 99 points. Wigan, 99 points. They beat Luton in that last game. So, it looks like it will be Barnsley and Wigan going up to the championship. And one of Luton, Forest Green Rovers, Portsmouth and Ipswich from the playoffs. So, looking at this now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this last game against Portsmouth. Because what I'm going to do is, I'm going to leave it on ultimate. And if I feel that I will definitely not do very well in the playoffs... By the way, we had two shots in that last game against Bristol. Two shots in, an, in a 90-minute game. Um, one of those was a goal, of course, from Greenwood. So, we'll try it out again. We'll leave it as it is. If Portsmouth batter me, they're the team we're likely to be playing in the, uh, the, the, the playoff semi-final. So, yeah, man. Mills got the run of Curtis. He's used it well as well. Left-hand side, Ronan Curtis just about keeps ahead of his man, trying to defend against him. It's put out in the end by Walks, and it will be a corner ball to us. Don't need to see the league table. I've already seen it plenty enough. Stop showing me it. Saka's corner in towards the box. is punched away by the goalkeeper. And uh, Evans heads it on. Jones will recollect the play for us. Turn away to Curtis Jones. Now into the feet of Greenwood, who's put under pressure immediately. How do you break them down? They just defend like everybody's Virgil van Dijk. Curtis wins it back. Poor ball into Greenwood. Let's us down again. Lakerda, brilliant touch. Allows him to now drive forward. The run from Mason Greenwood is there. Good pass from Lakerda. Oh, we've skied it. Oh, we have skied it. It is just not our day. <laughs> When we eventually do create, I do that. What am I doing? That is awful. That is abysmal from me. Missed times. Just, oh dear. It was, it was worked really nicely as well. Lakerda driving forward. Great touch to set himself up initially. The run from Greenwood held pretty well. Then he did enough to be able to uh, 
to get the shot away. Greenwood again. Look, actually, you know what? We're playing pretty well here. Lopez in a central position. Lopez, great turn. And we've got the breakthrough. It's 1-0 Forest Green. I don't know what is happening in this game all of a sudden. We are able to create. This is better. Maybe I don't even have to touch the difficulty, right? I'm proving to myself that we can play on ultimate. But some games are just a lot harder than others. The way we started here, though, we've, uh, we've certainly been the better team. And maybe it's because both teams here realise there isn't a lot to play for. As it is, Harrison off towards Cannon. Jose Antonio trying to stop him from getting into our penalty area. Five minutes until half time. I really would like to go in leading at the break if we can. It's given away, but then given straight back to Portsmouth as walks his delivery. It's going to be in. No, it's not. Jay Cook saved it. Big save. I tell you what, that should have been, that should have been 1-1. Lopez here, found by Curtis, back towards Ronan Curtis. And on the counter-attack here come Forest Green. Rovers, straight at their goalkeeper. Both teams wasting opportunities and big opportunities that as well. Two minutes until half-time. Just get us into this half-time break and let me breathe a sigh of relief that we are actually in front. Heading into half-time. Cannon up towards Evans. Given away by Harrison. Jose Antonio collects it. And there is half-time. It's not been easy. But we have been the better team here. And with the potential of playing against Portsmouth in our first of the two... Oh, sorry. Well, I can't say of the first of the two legs because it will be against them both times. It does fill me with a lot of confidence moving forward. But uh, it might have just been a one-off that first half. We'll see what the second half brings. Excellent work by Bakayo Saka as he steals back possession for us. Now across to Lopez. It's two for his green. Have we turned a corner? Heading into playoffs. This is what we want to see. It was Saka's excellent work. Stealing the ball back off of the fullback from, uh, from Portsmouth. Their left back. And then as soon as he got into the penalty area, he found the ball across to Diego Lopez for our Spanish hero to, to smash it home. 2-0. I don't know what the result with Luton is. I'm not interested at the moment in time. And this, this is a lot better. This is what we want to be seeing. Saka into the feet of Curtis Jones. And again, Bak Bakayo Saka has left the left back again. He's all over the place there. Is there full back on that far side? Saka needs to do better with the finish though. He has got the beating of that left back every single time he's been there. We need to utilise it. Saka is having a fine game at right wing. It's just a shame we haven't finished that one off. Lakerda into our Greenwood. Greenwood now looking for Lopez. It's cut out by Burgess and he can play his way out to Harness. But yeah, man, Saka, this is probably one of the better games I've seen him play in a forest green shirt. And what a challenge that is as well coming in from Lakerda. Lopez, Saka again, look at this. He, every time, every single time, he's in. And this time, I've lacked the composure, maybe. No, Lopez. Oh, it should have been. It should have been. Curtis towards Lopez. Portsmouth just can't get a moment of respite. It's three. It is the hat trick for Diego Lopez. And he signs this game off with a kiss to the camera. Ready for playoff action because that, my friends, will be the last that we see of Lopez for today. I'm just going to show you the sliders as well. Maybe these are the sliders we need to be going with moving forward. That's the settings that I've got currently on. And of course, on my side, everything stays at 50. But Diego Lopez with his final contribution to this game. It does feel, however, like Portsmouth are only at sort of 60%, if that. So I don't want to read into this way uh, too much. Green was going to drop into Cam. Garuzetta comes on and so too does Winchester. And uh, that is the result for us pretty much already secured, I, th I feel like. It has been a very good performance on the final day. But we need to take this into the playoffs with us. Harrison looking for a consolation for Portsmouth. Might just get it. Rawson, vital touch. I'm pressing to clear with Lakeda. It hasn't done. Are we going to get this ball away? Yes, we are. Just about. Rawson with a vital touch. Luton have just scored against Oxford and now have drawn level. In fact, there's another goal. Oh, Oxford are back in front. As it stands, we're heading third. Saka again down this right-hand side. Now Winchester lets it run for Curtis. It's four for Forest Green. Where has this been? I'm a poet as well. Curtis's celebration, you love to see it. 
And it does mean, like I said, we go third if Oxford remain the same in that game. In fact, it could well be even if they draw it, we are still third. I'm, I don't, I'm not going to get ahead of it, okay? Because we've still got a while to do. But Ronan Curtis gets in on the act now. We're six minutes away. And I really don't know what to say. Because just before this game, I was feeling very, very... I guess, dejected, uh, pessimistic. And, and then we come here and we smash Portsmouth. 4-0. Ultimate difficulty. You saw the sliders. Yeah, it's a strange one, uh, by all accounts. No idea what's going on. <laughs> Winchester now through to Guzetta. Portsmouth, they are trying to get back in the game. And in doing so, have conceded a fifth. They were left in a two-on-two. Guzetta and Greenwood against their two central defenders. It's 5-0 Forest Green. I feel like scratching my head a little bit. Can't lie. And based on this performance, I think we will stay with ultimate difficulty then for the playoff games. Makes sense, right? Because we've smashed Portsmouth here. We show we can play on it. And then it just comes down to our performance on the day more than anything. So, yeah. Ultimate difficulty moving forward into the playoffs then. It finished 2-1 with Oxford and Luton. So we do climb to third, which means we will play against Ipswich in the semi-finals of the playoffs, meeting one of Luton or Portsmouth in the final. We missed out on automatic promotion by two points. Barnsley managing to get the second spot. Wigan take top spot. They go back to the championship. Um, down the bottom side of the table, uh, Burton, Al uh, Burton Albion, Bristol Rovers who beat us 2-1. If we'd have beaten Bristol Rovers, we'd have been up into the championship in automatic. Are you joking? I didn't know Bristol were in the bottom four. That makes it even worse. Tranmere and Rochdale also go down as well. But that's done us then for the League One table. Uh, the next time you see us will be the playoffs. It will be completely live. Of course, we'll play through the first two games here. And then if we are through to the final, we will also play that. I'm so hoping that we'll be in the championship because if, if we don't get to the championship, then Lopez will go, I feel like. I can't imagine he'll stay. A couple of other players might consider wanting to leave as well. Um, but I guess we'll have to see what, what it brings. I want to see quickly the overall award winners because if Lopez doesn't get player of the competition, then there's an issue. Team of the competition has been announced. We'll take a look at the stats as well before we go today. Um, to decide whether or not the player of the competition was the correct call. So team of the competition, who is in it? Well, Mills is uh, one of our players. Curtis, Lequeda, Lopez in there as well. A couple of Barnsley uh, lads. In fact, no, only one Barnsley player. Luton's goalkeeper, Wickham, central defender. Luton again in there. Wigan, Monsheen, unsurprising. He was the top scorer. He scored like 30-something goals. He might get player of the competition, which... I can half understand, but when you look at uh, Lopez's contribution in a second, you'll be pretty mind blown. 32 goals is what he got. And it did go to Monsheen, the player of the competition. I, I guess you can understand it. But before we go, let's have a quick look at the player stats and tell me if you think, no bias or anything, that was the correct call. So, as we scroll over to League One, that's the Carabao Cup. Not interested in that. In fact, Lopez got five goals as well in our Carabao Cup success this season, which was also good. So there you go. Lopez, 28 goals in 44 games. So he played two less than Monsheen and only managed four goals less. He ended up with 11 assists. Monsheen ended up with eight. So I guess it is pretty close between the two of them. And Lopez did score three in that last game against Portsmouth. So you could argue that, that point as well. Um, but yeah, fair play to Monsheen. My friends, that brings today's episode to a close. I apologise for the saltiness earlier on during the game against Bristol Rovers. You can understand, though, it is rather frustrating, especially when you love the game mode as much as I do. You know, career mode is something that um, I, I played even before I was making YouTube videos for enjoyment. And just to see the sort of laziness from EA in the way they make updates and do things to this, this game mode, it, it really does kind of put a downer on you and make you not want to play the game. And at first, when I when I looked at the ultimate, you know, difficulty changes and saw they'd done to effectively make all the players have 99 stats, I wasn't so sure about whether or not that was a bad thing. And then since I've been playing it more and more, um, I have to say I, I'm not happy with the change they made. You know, it's just it just doesn't it doesn't have the realism factor. It doesn't make me enjoy the game, I guess. 
especially when you've got teams that are down in the bottom four playing like they're some, you know, incredible side because of those 99 stats. I just wish that they had a bit more drive in career mode, really. And that's been something that has been the same case for a lot of years. But anyway, we'll move past that. Hopefully you had a great weekend, everybody. And hopefully you will have a great Sunday. You're watching this hopefully on the Saturday. I said hopefully about four times there. Apologies for that. Nevertheless, a massive thank you for watching. And a massive thank you as well for all of the support on the channel. Until next time, enjoy your evening. And I'll see you all again soon. Adios.